20 years after letting China join the WTO and after trillions of dollars of investments, the free world has realized the communist regime's ambition. Countries are re-evaluating their China strategy, and the pandemic has prompted businesses to move out. One country that has benefited from the grand exodus is Vietnam. As more multinational companies move manufacturing to Vietnam, understanding the Southeastern Asian countries past and present becomes critical, particularly its relations with China. How are the two communist states getting along? Will Vietnam be different from China? Hi everyone, welcome to my show, I'm Lei. The relationship between China and Vietnam is full of shared values and bitter conflicts. Unlike other Southeast Asian countries where Hinayana Buddhism is practiced, Vietnam is similar to China, where Mahayana Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism laid the country's spiritual foundation. Until the 17th century, when the Vietnamese language began to be Romanized, educated Vietnamese wrote in the Chinese script. However, the Vietnamese have fought off Chinese invasions for 2,000 years. The fight between the communist camp and the free world has shaped the modern Vietnam and still influences geopolitics today. Let's revisit Vietnam's past relations with world powers so we can understand the present and have a clear vision of the future. At the end of World War II, Joseph Stalin supported Ho Chi Minh in establishing the Vietnamese Communist Party, or VCP, in North Vietnam, while France supported Emperor Bao Dai in the South. War broke out between the North and South in December 1946. After Mao Zedong and the Chinese Communist Party seized power in 1949, Stalin agreed to let Mao lead the communist movement in Asia. Stalin ordered Ho Chi Minh to follow Mao's leadership and the CCP to help Vietnam financially and militarily. In 1952, Mao dispatched an advisory group to Vietnam. Together with the VCP, the group wrote out the CCP's land reform campaign in Vietnam. The reform involved seizing private land and executing and imprisoning landlords and wealthy farmers, causing a famine in Vietnam. After the Korean War ended in 1953, Mao Zedong immediately sent troops to Vietnam to help the North fight the French in the South. In 1954, the Communists won the Battle of Dien Bien Phu, and the French decided to get out of Vietnam. At the 1954 Geneva Conference, Vietnam was divided, with the North ruled by the Communists and the South by Emperor Bao Dai. In February 1956, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev denounced Stalin and initiated the policy of peaceful coexistence with the West. Khrushchev sent a convoy to Hanoi to convey the new direction, and Ho Chi Minh decided to stop the CCP's violent land reform. This made Mao extremely angry, and he threatened to stop sending money and weapons. So Ho Chi Minh compromised and continued the land reform so as not to lose Mao's favor. Vietnam was thus caught in the middle of the growing distrust between China and the Soviet Union. Meanwhile, Mao was not happy about the Geneva Agreement and wanted North Vietnam to resume fighting against the South. In 1960, while more than 20 million Chinese starved to death during the Great Famine, Mao established the Southern Vietnam National Liberation Front to prepare for war. Since the South was incapable of self-defense against the North and the Chinese, U.S. President John F. Kennedy supported South Vietnam through a counter-communist campaign. In 1963, Mao sent Defense Minister Lin Biao to sign a military agreement with the VCP, stipulating that the CCP would send troops to assist if the VCP stopped taking orders from the Soviet Union. And then in July 1964, the VCP attacked American warships in the Beibu Gulf. This was known as the Tonkin Bay Incident, which led to American military engagement. After the incident, Khrushchev wrote to President Lyndon Johnson, stating that the Soviet Union had nothing to do with it. Meanwhile, Le Duan, the first secretary of the VCP, went to China to ask for more financial aid. Mao promised to bear all the expenses of the war, but demanded that the VCP decouple from the Soviet Communist Party. 
A few months later, in October 1964, Khrushchev was removed from power. The new Soviet leadership abandoned his policy of peaceful coexistence with the West and actively supported the Vietnam War. And the VCP broke its promise to Mao. The following April, Le Duan visited the Soviet Union and finalized an $8 million military assistance program from the Soviets. Five years later, in 1969, Ho Chi Minh died. The war had devastated Vietnam. The Vietnamese leaders realized that they were being used by China and Mao to fight the West. The Soviet leaders also felt that continuing the war was not in their best interest. But Mao demanded that the VCP resist the United States to the end if they wanted aid from China. The new generation of VCP leaders refused to satisfy Mao's war appetite and initiated peace talks with the United States. To retaliate, Mao vigorously supported the Communist Party of Cambodia to combat the VCP, creating the Khmer Rouge disaster. The anti-Vietnam War sentiment was growing in the United States. President Nixon's visit to China in 1972 was a turning point. Mao befriended Nixon, who subsequently decided to move the U.S. troops out of South Vietnam and cut all military aid. To many South Vietnamese, Nixon's decision to withdraw was a betrayal. It was only a matter of time before the South fell. The Communists succeeded in taking over the South, fulfilling Mao's goal. The Vietnam War was one of the greatest disasters of the 20th century, and the CCP sponsored it. During the Vietnam War, the Communist camp provided about 30 million tons of supplies to North Vietnam, of which the Soviets provided only 200 tons. China provided the bulk of the war supplies. By 1972, the Khmer Rouge was relying mainly on China for weapons, whereas the North Vietnamese were relying on the Soviet Union. The growing rift between the two communist superpowers would soon be mirrored in the division between the Cambodian and Vietnamese communists. In December 1978, Cambodia was invaded by nearly a quarter million soldiers from Vietnam. The Khmer Rouge was hopelessly outgunned by the Vietnamese. Mao had already died, and Deng Xiaoping decided to teach Vietnam a lesson. When asked about Sino-Vietnamese relations during his historic visit to the United States in 1979, Deng said, Our little friend is disobedient. It's time for a spanking. Two weeks later, on February 17, 1979, the Chinese People's Liberation Army invaded Vietnam. The war ended in a month after the Soviet Union threatened the CCP, by mobilizing its tanks to patrol its borders with China. After the war, Vietnam went through economic hardship. While all foreign trades was shut off due to U.S. sanctions, China, now having befriended the United States, doubled down on Vietnam and closed its borders. On March 14, 1988, China attacked the Spratly Islands and killed 68 Vietnamese soldiers, this was the 1988 Spratly Island Massacre. By then, the Soviet Union was showing signs of economic decline and gradually cut all aid to Vietnam. Without the Soviet's aid and facing U.S. sanctions, while China closed off the borders, Vietnam felt abandoned. Vietnam went through a decade of financial hardship until after the Tiananmen Square Massacre in 1989, when China became isolated. The CCP desperately needed allies, and the VCP could not survive if its communist neighbor fell. The two countries then decided to set aside past differences. In September 1990, China and Vietnam held a secret meeting in Chengdu to normalize relations. Jiang Zemin and Yuan Wenling signed a secret pact that some say required the VCP to get the CCP's approval for major party appointments and agreed to let Vietnam become a satellite state of China and be treated as an autonomous and self-governed zone. History has taught the Vietnamese people not to trust the CCP. There have been public protests against China in Vietnam. Although relations have improved over the decades, Vietnamese textbooks today still depict the U.S. as invaders and hypocrites. The VCP is at odds with the United States ideologically 
So it needs communist China as a big brother to back it up. It understands that if the CCP falls, the VCP will follow suit. So there is no reason for the VCP to fight China unless it's for self-defense. The person who summarized the Sino-Vietnamese relations very well is the VCP's founder, Ho Chi Minh, who said, The French are foreigners. They are weak. Colonialism is dying. But if the Chinese stay now, they will never leave. As for me, I prefer to sniff the French blank for five years than to eat Chinese blank for the rest of my life. No other country in Southeast Asia has a culture closer to China than Vietnam, and no other country has had to contend with Chinese rule for as long as Vietnam. Vietnamese people know best what's good for them. I hope we can all learn from this drama in history and take our steps well now and in the future. Here's the other video I made about Vietnam's economic growth and a video about Mao Zedong and his successors. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.